Hello, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Alana. I am here with Jamie. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Good. So we have, uh, why don't you, <laughs> you lead, you tell us what our topic is. Yeah, well, our our topic, as I make sure my, uh-oh, I'm doing all kinds of strange We're both things rambly. with my, uh, well, I'm doing all <laughs> kinds of weird stuff. Something about my audio is kind of weird. Okay, so our topic today is praying through change, I guess, and some life updates, because we both have a lot of life updates. We've touched on some in some previous episodes recently, but um, but yeah, we've got some pretty big changes coming up in our lives and it just like anytime we record and we're thinking of topics, I think like what is going on that's real right now in real time mm -hmm. that we can talk about. And so I feel like this is definitely something that we're sort of in the thick of and wouldn't be bad to just open up the can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you want to start us off with some prayer? Yeah, so we've got a verse of the day from Isaiah 30, 19 to 22, which this is kind of my go to when I'm in time of change or things are uncertain. Um, just it gives me a little bit of a lot of confidence just knowing that that God is with me. So this one is uh, Isaiah 30, 19 to 22. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Then you will desecrate your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. This is my favorite part. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. <laughs> And to me, I don't know literally exactly how other people would apply this, but to me, I just think like once we receive, um, you know, even though there is adversity, even though there is change or maybe things that we're not happy about or that we're not sure of, um, whether we turn to the right or the left, we, we're going to hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. And, and you know, we will be directed. Um, and in the light of that kind of confidence and connection with God and wisdom from God, the idols that we've built up for ourselves are going to seem like literal filthy rags. Like we're going to throw them away like menstrual cloths. I mean, I think that's a, a really maybe TMI imagery of <laughs> just how much we're going to want to get rid of those idols because they just so pale in comparison to to the wisdom and the hope of of okay this is what's in front of me what's behind me is i'm going to throw that away the idolatry of comfort the idolatry of what's familiar the idolatry of what i thought i wanted or what i still kind of want <laughs> it's mm -hmm. going to pale in comparison to knowing like that next step forward is where we're headed that's what i'm hope yeah. hopeful for well and i love the promise we see in verse 21 whether you turn to the right or to the left <clears throat> excuse me, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walk in it. And I, I take that as a promise that God will never leave you without guidance. Mm -hmm. And that when you're praying, should I go here or should I go there? And you truly are listening to God's voice and you still don't have an answer. I also feel like this verse gives us kind of permission and freedom to take a step in one of those directions. And if it's wrong, then God will, he'll be the, you know, you'll hear that little GPS recalibrating, take a U-turn up ahead. I love that too, because I think that's so important to point out. It doesn't say as you prayerfully and painstakingly contemplate what direction to take, you're going to hear mm -hmm. this is the way you need to go. It's right. whether you turn to the right or the left, whether you make the right mm -hmm. choice or the wrong choice, or there are yep. two choose your own adventures that lead to the same ultimate ending you're going to have that guidance. And no matter what, that's mm -hmm. so comforting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know we've used the analogy before, but if I'm in a parking lot and I need GPS to tell me where I'm going next and they say head West, I'm like, I don't know where West is. So I just start driving in a direction. Yeah. Or drive and to the route, like return to the <laughs> route. Or I'm like, well, if I knew where it was, I, I wouldn't be using my wouldn't GPS. Be missing you. <laughs> but you can't be sitting still. 
Right. And do you know what I mean? So yeah, you need to I move will start to get moving. that feedback. Yes. And then I'll either hear a beep or a boop, boop, boop. And that will let me know which, you know, have I made the right choice or not? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, do you want to open us up in some prayer? Yeah, let's do it. God, we just thank you for this time together to talk about upcoming changes and just to celebrate your place in that. I, I just keep coming back to where would I be without you in times that seem uncertain and times that maybe aren't going um, as, as I would originally have planned. And I just thank you, God, that we can celebrate your presence with us and celebrate you reaching a hand out to us to have fellowship and communion, that you're not this distant God that just kind of watches as things go on, but you're just intimately and intricately involved in our lives and in our choices and in the outcomes of, um, of our, of our life circumstances. We thank you for that. God bless this conversation. Just let it be glorifying to you. Amen. Amen. Well, you've got some updates for us. So why don't you just jump in and tell us all what's going on in the Hampton world? Yeah, well, we are officially moving out of Alaska and it's been somewhat official for a long time, but not totally official. And to be totally honest, at the time of our recording, there are two states that we might be moving to and it's <laughs> still not 100% clear. So that's frustrating for me. But again, it's like, just another reminder that ultimately I'm not in control and I wouldn't want to be. So I'm, I've been practicing resting in uncertainty, even though we're going to need to move in two months. I mean, basically, and at the same time, we have a kid, both of us have kids going to college in the fall. Um, and our kid, it turns out is going to be going to college July 1st, probably. Um, because he's going to, uh, he's probably going to end up going to West Point, which is both incredible and terrible all at the same time for uh, mom, you know? I know, but you know, mostly incredible, but yeah, it's, it's incredible, but there isn't going to be as much time with him this summer. Mm -hmm. Um, and there will not be as many, it's not like, Hey, I joke around. Like if you went to a regular college, I could just you know, <laughs> show up and bring a picnic lunch and uh -huh. we could go have lunch together, you know, but there's no picnic lunch, at least not plebe year for any of the academies. So, um, again, with the academy, there is actually, he's on the waiting list for the Naval Academy, which was originally his first mm -hmm. choice. So there's also a chance that at the last minute, he could get a, you know, last minute appointment mm -hmm. and have a really tough decision to make. So yeah. it's, there's so much up in the air and I don't like it. <laughs> I, I know. Like well, it. I'm going to, this isn't the first time we've done this. I'm going to rechristen our episode and that's just praying when you're still in limbo, right? I like because that. you yes. know that you've got changes coming, but you don't know what they are. Are we going to be in this state or that state? We know we're leaving Alaska, but we don't know where we're going to end up. Or I know my son is off to a military academy. Is it going to be this one or is it going to be that one? Right. Um, and when are we going to find out? And we're kind of in limbo um, specifically regarding Scott's job. So yes. we had a really um, just funny, honestly, it comes up in conversation about once a week. Like how in the world does Scott end up doing what he's doing? So <laughs> picture this, I'm going to pitch you our our sitcom version of what happened in our family life because I think like it totally could so you've got this guy who's been a pastor and doing lots of odd jobs for his entire career um he's in his mid-40s they've been a homeschool family forever and when he starts eighth grade their youngest son says I want to go to public school and so his mom and dad say okay and then they find out, oh, the public school is very desperately in need of substitute teachers. And so the dad says, yeah, I don't mind doing that, you know, a couple times a month. <laughs> and then, so last fall, the fall of um, the 23-24 school year, Scott would sub, I don't know, up to maybe two, two times a week or so. And then all of a sudden, um, the principal left. So one of the other teachers had to move up to the principal position. And they were like, Scott, we want you to be the like permanent sub for this middle school classroom. And he says, sure, sounds fun. 
And then they hand him a stack of paperwork and they say, oh, and here you go. Here's how you can get an emergency credential from the state of Alaska so that you can become like a full-time career teacher. So our sitcom would be called like Accidental Teacher. And I love it. <laughs> the Accidental we're, Teacher. We're in limbo because, um, because of the way the emergency certification works. Preference would be given to somebody with the more traditional type of teaching credential. So we still have another week or so where the idea is, well, Scott's probably going to be teaching the same thing next year, and he's probably going to be in this classroom, but it's all in limbo. So that is, uh, that's where we are. And, you know, let's just take a minute to talk about the things that make limbo hard, right? So in, in your case, what are some of the just logistic or emotional considerations that make this season difficult while you're still in limbo? Well, I would say one of the things that gets me through transition times is being able to picture myself in the next stage. Mm -hmm. And right now it's bifurcated in multiple ways. And so mm -hmm. I can't like, that's too much energy. I can't yeah. picture all the things. And, mm -hmm. um, and also just knowing like how to put your energy. I mean, I'm thinking of the fact yeah. that we have two, literally two states, which the, the circumstances of that are, I don't really want to get into it. It's just too complicated. Yeah. It has to do with yeah. my husband's job, but, um, just the idea of like two completely different states and mm -hmm. um, looking, I've been investing a lot of time and energy looking at houses, looking at areas, looking at schools in this one state that we thought we were headed to. And then like now we have this kind of monkey wrench in the plan mm -hmm. of like, okay, now I have to start considering this other thing. Yeah. Um, and the same with our son, you know, I think, I, I mean, the dates are similar. He either reports mm -hmm. July 1st or June 27th. That is not mm -hmm. all that different. But there are a lot of really important things he needs to do between now and then for both of yeah. them. And some of them include purchasing things for one that the other one supplies. Right. <laughs> um, some of them breaking in boots. But once you break in the boots right. and then get switched. I mean, like, so um, the, the long and the short of it is there's no control. And like I said before, it's both a good and a bad thing not to have control because control is really an illusion anyway, because at any moment mm -hmm. the rug can be pulled out from underneath you, no matter yeah. what your, your best laid plans are. So yeah. I think that's one thing, but another thing for me is in terms of prayer, like when I think of the things that I need to be praying about, I don't even sometimes like there are there are some very basic unchangeable things that I can be praying for, for my kid who's going to go to some mm -hmm. kind of service academy. And the, a lot of the mm -hmm. prayers are the same, but there's just something unsettling about putting prayer energy into whatever it is, not being able yeah. to, not being able to picture it. I think, picture it. yeah. So that's another thing. Um, so I, I think those are just two things um, but the other thing is I get into a state of paralysis, getting things moving in any direction, even the things that I can get going now. Right. It's tough for me to do that. And we had this conversation, you know, just the other day about, I, I just feel like I, it's not that I don't physically have the time mm -hmm. to do some of the things that I need to do that could just be things that need to get done. But mm -hmm. I just, it's like, I'm paralyzed. It's like, I just don't yeah. even, I don't, I can't quite explain it, but there's a paralysis involved yeah. um, and a, a b mental block for me in a lot I of totally areas get right that. now. Yeah. When I don't have a clear picture of kind of what's ahead of me, I get into a similar state. Like I know I got pretty bad writer's block during the pandemic because I was like, I don't know if this is going to be a two week thing or a two year thing or a two month thing. I don't know if I'm going to get sick. Um, I don't know if, you know, at the very beginning, I don't know if the world's going to be like existing in the way we know it right now. So like, do I want to put energy into writing a book? <laughs> and it is hard, um, even if it's an exciting thing. Like I remember we were, um, I was in the middle of a book when we put an offer in on the house that we had finally moved into. 
And even if they accepted our offer, it was going to be months before we moved. But the day we put in the offer, I couldn't write because I, I'm like you in that my prayers and my vision of the future are pretty, um, imagery filled. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't have that picture, I don't know what to pray about. I don't know what to focus on. So like in your case, my son's going to be at this academy or that academy and academy life is probably similar ish. Like you said, he's going to need the same prayers in one or the other, but I am totally with you. If I can't picture which one he's in, it almost, um, to me, I would be battling the sense of, well, I'm almost wasting my prayers since I don't know where he's going to end up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, isn't that strange? And you know, and the same for um for moving when I'm praying mm-hmm. the same types of prayers for my kids and for my mm-hmm. husband and for me, like church family, friends, yeah. right, just mm-hmm. the perfect house. But it's almost like I mean, isn't I I we know God's big enough that I can pray a general prayer mm-hmm. and the perfect house or the perfect friends or the perfect school or whatever it is that that's being prayed for is going to happen. But there's just, but it, it just doesn't, I don't feel like I'm in it. And maybe that's yeah. the key. Like I, and that's what I've been coming back to again and again is it is stripping me of any sense of control And Mm -hmm. therefore it is good because I'm having to say, God, only, you know, only, you know, what state we're going to be in only, you know, which Academy, if any, that he's going to end up in because anything could change. There are other options out there too. So, um, it's been a good thing. It's been an, but it's been very challenging, just very challenging. Yeah. So what do, what does your prayer life look like at the moment? At the moment, my prayers are triggered by my emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been a busy season of just everything with the, you know, paperwork stuff, medical stuff for the, for, Mm -hmm. for our son and all that he's doing. There's so much paperwork, so many medical things that have to be done and documentation. And, and then there's the stuff for the house and the relocation Mm -hmm. company that we're having to deal with and set up that stuff. And there's school and there's whatever. And so I'm not creating a lot of space right now. And I am, like I said, frankly, paralyzed in, in, in like initiating anything beyond what I absolutely have in front of me that has to get done with a deadline. And even Mm -hmm. a couple of those have slipped. Um, but, uh, so I am driven by my emotions. So, you know, when I woke up at 2 AM, just kind of like in a little bit of a panic of, Oh my gosh, he's, like life is changing after this. He's Mm -hmm. not going to be with us have hardly at all ever. And then he'll be deployed and then it'll be whatever. And so all of these things, um, like I, that when those things happen or, you know, I was at work, um, at the school that I work at the other day and had kind of a, a crisis thing with a deadline for one of his things. Um, and, I just, I, that drives me to pray because it's my lifeline and Mm -hmm. I don't know how to step forward without that. So that's another good thing. It's another thing where everything is stripped away down to desperation. And so that's kind of right now what my prayer life has been like, and just a lot of prayer for the emotional state of my kids, for their mental Mm -hmm. health, for their emotional and physical health, but mostly like just, um, just for them to be in a good spot, um, with all of the changes, knowing how it's impacting me so deeply, it has to be, I mean, they're protected to a certain degree from some of the, the ebbs and flows of what may or may not happen, but they're Mm -hmm. in the, in the thick of it too. So Yeah. yeah, I've been doing a lot of prayer for them and for my husband. He is, been more stressed than I've seen him with this new job with just all of the unknowns. He's been more stressed Mm -hmm. than maybe I've ever seen him ever. And so carrying a lot of burdens of others too, and, and triggered by their Mm -hmm. emotional struggles too. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely recognize that when Scott, especially when you first started teaching, he -hmm. would come home and, and he is always a cheerful person, Mm -hmm. but I would still like feel all the stress (laughs) 
from his day, or he would say things to me that he didn't feel bothered by, but I was like, how can you work in this type of environment? <laughs> right. And <clears throat> it is, it's really stressful because, um, anybody who's married, your, your well being and your emotional state is going to be impacted by how stressed your husband is. And, um, I know for me, I got into, is he going to come home? Like, really wound up or is he going to come home really happy because if it was like a good day and the kids like were were great he'd be like super super happy I'm like I, and then if it was like the kids were terrible that day and he'd be like really really drained and I just I would never know and that again that's kind of a um a limbo you're all you're always putting out your emotional feelers mm -hmm. to be like is it going to be this or that and I think we do that with our future as well so you're probably without even thinking about it, you're having to put out multiple feelers. Um, if we go to uh, state A, what do I need to get done? If we go to state B, what do I need to get done? And if my kid goes to this academy, what, what do we need? And if he's at that one, what do we need? And I think one thing that could be really useful, even for his academy, like take a look at all the things that they, that you would need to buy for him and just start with the things that are in both of them, right? And I feel like we could do that with our prayer list too. So let's yeah. say you're trying to decide about, um, you don't know what state you're going to be living in, but you definitely know that you want to be praying about your kid's school, right? So almost find the things that you can pray about regardless, like the things that won't change, right? Yeah. The things that won't do change. Do a Venn diagram of, yeah. <laughs> of things and wherever they overlap. Yeah. So like in my case, whether Scott's working at the school full time next year or not, either way, he's going to be involved in the school, you know, either as a sub or as a teacher. So I can keep praying for him and his relationship with the other teachers and the administration. I can be praying for the students. So I would say um, if you're just kind of so overwhelmed and I've been in this place too, find the things that it would make sense to focus on regardless Right. Or um, when I was really blocked from writing um, when the pandemic started. So when we talked about the Clifton Strengths, this was a long time ago, but um, Clifton Strengths, there's a list of 34 different attributes that we all have in varying degrees. And my very first number one is called futuristic. So I'm always thinking about the future. And my strengths coach, what she told me, she's like, Alana, your futuristic is glitching. I'm like, yes, it is because I don't have a picture of what the future is going to look like. So she gave me some really good advice. She said, um, okay, can you picture where you're going to be in six months? I'm like, I have no idea. And then she said, can you picture where you'll be in a year? And I said, I have no idea. So can you picture where you'll be in five years? I'm like, well, in five years, um, you know, like we're not going to be in lockdown. I know that much. <laughs> and uh, we'll probably be like living with my family in Alaska. It's just like, okay, focus on that. Like focus on the things that do make. And again, there is a sense of we never know what, what's going to happen. But in as much as you can, like project um, in, so in 20 years, right? Like your life, is going what you could picture as your life probably isn't going to be dependent on the state you moved to, you know, this summer. Right. Um, and you know, in 20 years, you maybe you're thinking about, you know, being a grandma and retirement and those kinds of things. Um, so that's what really helped me when she told me my futuristic was glitching. So like go like keep projecting farther out if you need to and and find a like, you know how like a ballerina who's twirling, she needs to find like the one thing in her vision so she doesn't to get focus dizzy. on. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like that. So maybe your one thing is I'm going to um, just pray that wherever we end up, that our family stays close or wherever my son ends up um, that he will be, I don't know, you know, protected or he will thrive or things like that. Yeah. And that's a good starting point because it's kind of a similar phenomenon to when you have too many, when you have too many things on your prayer list and you just kind of are like, I yeah. don't even know if I, where to start. It's the same kind mm -hmm. of thing where it's like that mm -hmm. prayer analysis thing where you're just like, I've got yeah. too many things. Um, 
But with this, it's almost like, well, what's the point of praying? There's nothing to pray about. But there are lots of things you can pray about and just to list them Yeah. and do. I liked the Venn idea of finding Mhm. Mm what's in common with all of the things. Find what you can yeah. buy, what you can prepare for. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I know when Scott and I were first, um, you know, kind of falling in love and it was like um, emotions were up and down and all over the place. And I wanted to pray for our future together, but I also, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, this, you know, we might not end up together. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what I would do is, yes, I, I would pray a ton that we would end up together, but <laughs> At other times when I was trying to keep my heart more surrendered to God and to God's plan, I found myself like I made myself pray for Scott's future wife. And I told myself I might be praying for me or I might be praying for someone else, but I want Scott to have a happy marriage. I want Scott to have an encouraging wife and things like that. So again, it's finding the things where it reminds me a tiny bit of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they say, God will deliver us, but even if he doesn't, right? Um, Yeah. God will lead you to the right school for your kids to be in. And even if it doesn't look like it, like even if you have a bad experience at that school, you can still trust that God has been guiding you. Or you can find the things, well, you know what? Even if we end up at a really bad school by, by something, um, I know that our kids are going to know that they're loved, right? Find the things that you can anchor. They're like anchor points, right? Mm -hmm. um, regardless of what the situation looks like. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. And, you know, it just gives a little bit of kind of grounding, you know, like you said, anchor Mm -hmm. points, grounding where you're like, okay, I'm not floating off into nowhere. I do have Yeah. some specific things that I can be thinking up, thinking Mm -hmm. forward to and praying for. Yeah. I think focusing on gratitude can help with that grounding too, right? So if your mind is, if you're spending a hundred percent of your mental energy thinking about where am I going to be in three months, um, that's stripping you of thinking about like where you are right now. And so I can think of another grounding thing, like set five minutes a day, like for this five minutes, I'm not going to think about the future. I'm going to be thankful for the house we're in right now. I'm thankful that my kids are in a school they like right now. I'm thankful that my son has choices about his college future, you know, things like that. And, and that also helps us. I think it helps us get out of our heads, right? So maybe, um, maybe you're confronted by this huge, you know, like your, um, your child has just received a life-threatening diagnosis, like, you know, like one of these catastrophic, um, massive life events, and you feel like everything has been pulled up from under you. And I think even like a three minute, I'm going to focus on the things that I am thankful for mm -hmm. at this exact moment. Um, it's not denying the hardship you're going through, but it's helping you find those anchor points or that focal point. If you're, you know, you're the ballerina and you're getting spun around in a tornado, but if you can like once a day find even like, let's call it three things, right? To be thankful for, um, that can, it, it can help ground you. Yeah. And when you're in limbo, I mean, I do feel like it's, uh, you know, at least the limbo that I'm in at the moment, I do find Mm myself coming back to, thank you, God, that I, that, you know, there, that there's a choice that my husband Yeah. has a job right now, you know, like that, regardless of whether it's stressful, regardless of whether we're not sure where we're going to go because of it. Yeah. Like, at least there's, I mean, there's something, there's something ahead of us. And He is I mean, physically capable of working. He is You're going not to faced work with in one of unemployment. those places. Yeah. Yeah. And so thank you, God, that there is a choice and that whatever it is, you're in it. And the same with the school. I mean, what a hard problem to have. I mean, like, are you going to go to one service academy or another one? I mean, that's a great uncertainty to have in your future. So I'm, you know, that's not lost. Um, and so, yeah. And, and other, you know, I think back to years ago when our kid was not sure what he wanted to do and kind of freaking out about it. Like, I don't know what I want to do. And then to see the certainty of the path Mhm. that he's chosen for him, Mm -hmm. even if it's not something that every mom is thrilled for their kid to do, Mm yeah. I know Yeah. it's, he's certain about it and he's passionate Mhm. about Mm it. And I'm like, okay, he's that, thank you God that he's. been and I have seen God's hand in 
little things along the way to direct him mm -hmm. where he is now and to yeah. where he, what he wants to do. So all of these things can be absolutely, um, you know, just turned around into Thanksgiving, even yeah. if they're not exactly what you would have wanted. Right, right. And, you know, it could even be, thank you, God, that in two months, we're going to know where we're going to end up because we're going to be there, <laughs> you know, because right. um, it feels so long when you're in those it situations. Does. And, and you then, know, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the trick that I normally use when we're about to move and we've had uncertainty before is just projecting ahead like okay yep when i get there i'm gonna have a time when i'm you know secure when we know where we are mm -hmm. but my oldest isn't going to be with us and so i can't mm -hmm. like every time i try to do that yeah I'm like, oh, oh i don't want i don't want that i don't want to <laughs> be there i want i don't uh -huh. so but then maybe that brings me back to focusing on the present and enjoying the time that we do have and yeah. yeah. And also as an aside, I realize I've made some comments about when things don't work out the way you want it or no mom wants to hear this. I am so proud of my kid for wanting to serve our country and I am thrilled yeah. and so on board with that. Obviously yeah. the stakes are high and you're putting your life on the line in the end for your country and that's not exciting to think about so that's what i'm referring to but i just don't want anyone to come away from the fact that i'm like oh i wish he hadn't made this choice because mm -hmm. i believe this is what god has for him for his future and i'm very proud yeah. of it and very on board with it so i just don't want that i i realize i've kind of like made that comment a few times and yeah did not but want you it are to be where you are i mean no mom wants to see their little boy, which he still is in your mind, mm -hmm. go into something very, very dangerous, <laughs> you know, regardless of, um, you know, if that's a military or something else, because we we want to keep them safe. We want to keep them close. So there's, yeah. Um, but I think it can be a good reminder for springboard prayers, too. I think there are seasons where your your life chaos might be so great that you're almost, um, <laughs> as an example, when Silas was still on his feeding tube, I got a jury duty summons and our doctor wrote a note and she was like, this mother is the only person who can change this. Like, you know, this child has very specific medical needs. The mother needs to be home with him. And I got excused from jury duty. And I think that there are certain scenarios where I really do feel like we are 99% off the hook when it comes to passionate and prolonged intercession for others, right? If if your um if your whole family has just gotten in a devastating car accident and your house is burned down, I don't think God's up there wagging his finger being like, oh, why aren't they praying for their missionaries at their church? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, but if um so like you and I we're kind of in we're in difficult limbo, but it's not like it's all encompassing limbo, right? Like right, we're still, exactly. um, you know, we're, we're going to work or we're going about our days, even if like our brain is full of stress. <laughs> um, so in our cases, I think that we can even think about springboards for prayer. Like I have been praying so much for school teachers and I think I probably did that before, but I didn't know enough about what a school teacher goes through to be able to pray with much depth, right? I would be like, yeah, help the teachers have a really good day. Keep all the kids at school safe, <laughs> right? Like that was the extent of my prayers. And now um, I've seen my husband working there full-time. I've actually subbed in a couple classes. So I've got a better appreciation for how just draining that job is and how important that job is. And so and I go into the lives of the kids and what these kids yes. are going through. That's what has also mm -hmm. impacted me as I've been doing some substitute teaching too, is just seeing, yeah. having a window in, into what some of the kids are faced with at home yeah. and then having to come to school and then deal with school. I mean, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been incredibly yeah. eye-opening all around. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, here's a, here's a shout out. If anybody has a tiny bit of extra time, I think that every school district is as desperate for substitutes as <laughs> ours is. And like, so yep. um, just by a fluke, it just kind of randomly happened. Jamie, you've been substitute teaching for the first time this school year, Scott started. And now that he's in a class full time. Now they're again left without it's a sub. So, so I've funny jumped in that a we're times, like, so. yeah, leading parallel <laughs> lives again. 
<laughs> Almost a little bit, but um, yeah, if you're, if you're looking for like, I've even told them like, I don't want to do more than two, three days a month. Like I'm really not looking to get very deep into it. Um, but they are, like I said, they, they need subs. So if anybody's looking for a, um, <laughs> a mission field, think about it and, uh, and check with your school and be praying for the teachers. And in your case, Jamie, I could see it being a huge, um, just praying for the military. I have never once thought until this exact moment to pray for the, the moms of the people in the military. Um, how much of a, um, I don't even, I like, I want to use the word sacrifice, but in a way it's your son's choice. Yeah. <laughs> he would be doing it. I mean, I, I think your, your son's polite and respectful. If, if you're like, don't do this, he would at least take that to heart, but he's an adult. This is his choice. Um, so I, I don't want, I think sacrifice makes it out like you made the decision for him, but I can't think of a better word. And I was voluntold that. <laughs> that Exactly that to you be are going the mom to be a military mom, a military kid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I can't picture how much um, emotional stuff <laughs> goes into that. You know, like I've told my kids, and and they think I'm joking, and I'm absolutely not joking. And I've told them, if the chance comes for you to go to Mars, and like it in any of our lifetimes, we probably would assume that that is a one way trip you will kill me if you go. <laughs> like I have told them that like, I will not be able to survive. And it makes me think about, you know, like old timey missionaries, right? <sighs> you leave home, you have no idea if you're going to come back. You have no idea how long it's going to be before you can even get a letter home. And, and the, yeah, I think voluntold is a good way to put it. And, and what that does to do to the mom <laughs> who's left behind to worry about their kid. Speaking of Thanksgiving, though, and the Mars and missionary thing, I okay. mean, I just think to myself, what would it have been like in, you know, 100 years ago? I mean, West Point mm -hmm. is 200 years old. So let's just yeah. say 100 years ago in what would that have been? 1924. Or <laughs> I've got to, like, I can say 2024 really easily. But when I'm going back, I'm like 1920. Okay, yeah. Sorry, the math should have been easy. Um, yeah, yes, I'm substitute teaching for your children's math class. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, so in 1924, what would it have been like for that mom to send yeah. her kid to West Point and, mm -hmm. you know, to- Yeah, or, right after or, World War One. Yeah, or for mm -hmm. the military, you know, um, just any military mom, wife, family member, mm -hmm. whatever, girlfriend, um, yeah. in days where there was not the kind of technology that we have. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to have six weeks of no contact other than letters with him because they don't, during their boot camp, wow. they don't get any electronic devices and they get like three calls home during that time. Oh, once man. at the beginning, one, or I'm sorry, once a little bit through the middle and then two more before the end. Oh, I'm um, nervous for you. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound fun. It doesn't. But I think, oh my goodness, like I'll be able to go on Facebook and they have special like Facebook parents pages where yeah. the people at West Point take pictures of the plebes during their um, training, during all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like a Where's Waldo thing where you can see Aww. my kid, but at least you Cute. see them kind of doing stuff. Yeah. And, um in a very, I don't know, it reminds me of when we left our dog, Archie, at the, right. at the and kennel had and they had the Facebook page and they had the pet <laughs> yeah. cams and stuff. But anyway, all of that to say, I am so thankful to be in this age where when he's there, once he gets through his beast week or six weeks of, of mm -hmm. training, he'll have a phone. He'll be able to text me if he needs something. Yeah. He'll be able, we'll be able to call and FaceTime and yeah. thank you God that we live in this age where we can be close without being physically close. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love just ending on the, the gratitude note and thinking about your family moving. Like I love your home. It just, it's, we have so many great memories there back from when the kids were all like super little, little. and they would just, you know, hang out and we all lived in Anchorage together all the way up to like, <laughs> multiple times a year I'm like we need to spend the night because someone's taken on a flight and I'm just yeah I'm I'm so thankful that even when you're in another state 
you know, you and I are still going to be able to talk on the phone. We're still going to be able to zoom. Still going to be able to podcast and yeah. um, Yeah. But no, I I'm yeah, absolutely the same as that. I, I am so glad for that. Not to mention, I mean, I feel like, uh, there are so many travel is so much easier. And so I feel like writers conferences, podcast conferences, things like that. We can Mm -hmm. find a common spot to meet up and we can days in life is, you know, hopefully to the point where that's a little more doable. So anyway, but yeah, I'm very thankful. So when in doubt, give thanks. Yeah. And do it for the things that like, don't, don't force it. Right. Mm -mm. (laughs) I'm sad you're going. And so I'm thinking about how much I like your house. I'm not thankful that you're going to have a new house at the moment. I mean, logically I can be but right now. I just want to focus on like, just how thankful I am for that home and how many memories. Um, I don't know if I told you this, I was re-listening to my Kennedy Stern series Mm -hmm. and I realized that the layout of um, Carl and Sandy are the pastor and pastor's wife who kind of, you know, take her in. The layout of that home is like a perfect combination of your home and the home I grew up in. And oh. in my head, I I like I could see it, but oh my it wasn't gosh. until I was rereading it. I'm like, I totally put the Hamptons home into this book. Oh, I'm gonna have to re-listen now too. <laughs> That's really cool. You know, I don't really explain a ton of the layout. So you'd be like, this is right. My home but you have it in your head of mm-hmm. what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically like the bar stool, it looks to the door in the garage. The front door is over here. Like oh I totally gosh. have that in my in my mind. So um yeah, I think that whatever season you're in, I would say, yeah, find the things to be thankful for, find the springboard for prayer. Uh, that kind of relate and pertain to what you're going through. And then just be very gentle with yourself because limbo is hard. Um, it is hard not to know. And and kind of like what you were saying, yes, theoretically, you have the same amount on your plate in terms of what you physically need to do today right. than you did five months ago before any of this might have come up. But the amount of mental energy it takes to juggle all of these different contingencies, like that's, that's huge. And so, yeah, just be gentle with yourself. Um, and I guess we will. So for, for anyone who's wondering your moves, not coming up for, it'll be sometime early summer. Yeah. Like July. Okay. Um, and I don't know exactly when this episode's coming out. We're recording at the very end of April, but, um, Uh, it's going to be probably in the next few weeks, like probably. Okay. Okay. So as you're listening to this, be praying for the Hamptons, be praying for their, um, where they'll eventually settle, praying for their son or he'll settle. We are hoping that Scott will have a, either a contract in hand or not by the end of April. So we hopefully only have limbo for another couple days. Um, so but... he won't need your prayers. Thanks anyway. <laughs> Unless kidding. you want to do the retroactive prayers. which that's that's right. absolutely <laughs> No, he'll our... need your prayers <laughs> if he's a teacher. Um, can I add one more thing though, before absolutely. we go? Absolutely. It just reminds me, and I know we say it all the time and I almost take it for granted, but I don't want to go without saying in the middle of the uncertainty and the limbo, do not be afraid to take your frustrations to God. In that regard, you know, Mm -hmm. make sure that you're not just trying to put on a happy face of Thanksgiving Um, because I do that too. That's you asked me what my prayer life was looking like. And there are Mm -hmm. times when I'm frustrated when that translates to very real time prayer of God, can we just get this done, please? Can you just make this really clear really soon? Like, or even sometimes God, I feel gypped that like you didn't give our son his answer back in March when a lot Mm -hmm. of these other kids were getting their answers or February when these other kids were getting definite answers. Mm -hmm. Um, But a lot of even those like, God, I'm frustrated. Like some of those even lead to like glimpses of why. I mean, I've found that he's answered some of when I've Mm -hmm. gone to him and said, why did you do this? Mm -hmm. He actually has answered me in a couple of ways. Like, well, like Mm -hmm. if this had happened, this wouldn't have happened and this might be yeah. part of my plan. So I don't know, right. but just don't be afraid to to air all of the dirty laundry with God because he knows it anyway. And it's very therapeutic to just have a conversation with mm-hmm. God where you just say, I'm a little frustrated. I don't understand. Can you help me? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great, great yeah. place to end on. Um, So speaking of ending on, let's leave you all with our blessing and benediction. 
May God fill your heart with greater joy than all the world could ever offer. May he fill you with joy in his presence. May God himself be your joy and your delight. Through sorrow and sadness, may the joy of the Lord be your strength. May the Holy Spirit himself anoint you with the oil of joy and gladness to strengthen and encourage your spirit this day and forevermore. And our benediction is from 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 and 13. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen.